Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the Blessed Beast Live Weekend Syndicated Podcast. My name is Marcus Sullivan on Instagram at Marcus Sullivan Live. This is the chance where we get a chance to sit down and talk to dope people who do dope things, or like I always say, like people who are doing good in the neighborhood. On the show today, author Carissa Hubbard, what I love about it is I don't get a chance to talk to a new author this time, which I always do because I got some of the books and stuff behind me. But she's not a first-time author, not a two-time author, but a three-time author. We get a chance to hear your story. Uh, let's just jump right right into it. Uh, How did you know um, that you wanted to actually be an author? Uh, and and what, was your, what was your journey like? I think I asked my mom for a Lisa Frank journal, like, weekly. That was my jam. And I never grew up thinking I would be an author. Like, I thought I was going to be, like, Oprah. That was my dream. And then I started working, and I might have got laid off and fired a couple times in corporate. And I was like, this is wild. Like, I'm a writer. This is what I do. Like, why are y'all not wanting me to stay at your job? And then it dawned on me, oh, that's because you're supposed to – you're supposed to write your own stuff. I don't need you to write for companies. I just, I could hear God saying, like, I need you to do something that's your writing. And so I was actually, like, 23 when I finally decided, like, oh, I want to be an author. So yeah. it wasn't like a childhood dream. It was like, you know, I kind of found my purpose and my calling. And then I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. Growing up, were you a a big reader? Or, like, because, like, only time I read books when I was young is when we had to read the book to get the stamp, to put it in the book, to be a part of the pizza club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, little so, box tops. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. All right, so <laughs> were you into books or, like, what kind of stuff you was into? I mean, because it had to be something that sparked off, I want to be an author. Um, I really, and I still am not really a big reader. Mm. which is weird because I write books I don't like want to read but I think it was just the writing aspect like I was a doodler growing up like I just always had pen to paper so it made sense um you know I'm also really shy believe it or not Um, Mm. so I don't like talking I don't like public speaking but I feel like my voice can be heard in my book that's where I'm most powerful Mm. and when it became down to all right I'm going to write this book right what was the first book about or matter of fact what what is the first book what is the first book (laughs) so the first book is the popular girl Mm -hmm. and so this just kind of segues the entire series um so the popular girl becomes popular for loving god so Mm -hmm. she creates the new narrative of what popularity is it's not you know being the coolest girl or the most beautiful or prom queen she literally is praying for a friend she's giving them encouraging words and by the end of the book they name her the most popular girl in the school. So totally different twists on things. Um, so, you know, as I got into education, which is where I am now, um, I, you know, I see a lot of things in the school and I see kids doing things that, you know, they're trying to be popular okay. for different ways. And I said, hmm, how can I kind of twist it? How can I empower? Um, and I have a niece as well that's in school. And I'm like, I need her to have something of substance that's going to help guide her through her walk so she can make the right decisions. The popular girl. Yes. How much is your life in that popular girl? Ah, uh, see, it was who I wish I could have been okay. as a kid. Okay. So you was not popular. I was definitely popular, but I wasn't popular for loving God. So I call what my my previous pastor used to call. I was a drug baby. My mama drugged me to church. <laughs> every Sunday, every time the church doors was open. So I was one of those kids that was like, I don't want to go to church. Like, it's not cool to go to church. Mm. But then, you know, I got older and I'm like, man, loving God is like, it's lit over here. Like, God is good for real, for real. So I'm trying to put back into the kid that I wish I would have been. Like, God blessed me to be popular for playing basketball. I was a great basketball player. And that's what I should have been thankful for instead of hating going to church. I need to go thank him for giving me a talent and skill and being good at something. Carissa Hubbard inside the <laughs> Bless B Show. You was not a hooper. Oh, no, I was like that. Oh, she said she was like that. What school? <laughs> what, uh, what position? <laughs> and why? And listen, why the word was. Uh, I'm very much retired. The way these knees are set up. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, I got I to gotta wrap it up. But <laughs> <laughs> so, former athlete. All right. So, yes. the popular girl. When you mm, tell me about the first sit down and writing this book, tell me about the day. I'm right, did you have a title already? 
Uh, I did. Okay. I did. That was kind of my first um, thing that I found was the title. Um, and really, and it's crazy, people don't believe me, but I wrote it in a day. Um, you know, I felt like I've learned how to be very intentional about my writing process and my ministry. This is my ministry. This is my purpose. And so when God speaks to me, I can go ahead and knock it out in a day. And he had, it was clear as day what I wanted to write, how I wanted it to look. And so in a day, The Popular Girl was written. Now, as far as the publishing process you know that takes a little time but one day done i hope this actually encourages somebody because you you had to learn the publishing process and you actually had to sit down and actually write it now when people say i'm an author in 2024 um are we writing a book or we writing a book I'm definitely writing. I'm pen to paper. I'm old mm-hmm. school. I want, you know, I want to be able to cross through and, yeah. and go back and add. And, you know, it's just something about um, taking pride in your work and seeing it on that paper and seeing what it's going to look like. It's not going to be on the computer screen. It's yeah. going to be on paper and pen. So I yeah. want to get that feel early. Did you have the, uh, the, the bug or the oomph of this is going to be a bestseller? It's going to be great. This is going to – this is – this is retiring me. That's what you thought? That's what I thought. All right. Tell me what, what happened for real. Uh, <laughs> we're still working. Yeah. It's still a process. Yeah. Um, All right. And the reason why I want to say that is because um, writing a book is a lot like for an artist putting out a, a record. Right. Right? You, you might feel right. this is the joint and nobody's buying. Mm-mm. So a lot of it has to be... <laughs> yeah, that look with some passion. All right. So... Talk to me about the downside of it, right? Or the one reality hits you. Uh, you go on Facebook and you go on Instagram and you're like, yo, if you know me and you love me, support me, buy my book. And even those people, they'll hit like. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. we hit like, but mm-hmm. we're not swiping the car. Talk about those times. You know, I and I want to say I do have supportive people. People really rock with me and purchase the books, and I appreciate y'all. Um, you know, my mom actually just had a conversation with me about it, and she said to stop focusing on who's not and focus on who's doing because God has already mapped out what's ahead of you, and it's great. And so if you get to – too caught up in looking behind who didn't and who's not and who's you'll get lost in that instead of focusing on the forward so i'm learning how yeah. to not too much worry about who didn't all right do me this favor i want you to look right there in the camera and then i want you to talk to that person that's sitting around and they want to do something so bold and have the audacity to say they're writing a book and you would say be prepared for be prepared for the grind. It's it's not anything that's going to happen overnight. It's something that's going to take time. You've got to be willing to put in the work. You've got to be bought into yourself. you got to be locked into yourself because there are going to pe- be people that don't believe in you and won't support you, but you've got to trust the vision, trust your plan, and stick to it and see it all the way through. Absolutely love that from a vet. I needed that part for myself because so, I'm going to put out a book one of these days. I put yes. out an audio book in 2020. It went crazy, but okay. it was an audio book. All right, so you just said a few minutes ago, Chris, you are still working on the sales of The Popular Girl on book one. Mm-hmm. We on book three. We're on book three. All right, so um, what made you go book one we working on? Mm-hmm. Book two. Working on. (laughs) I'm going back. I'm doing another book. Uh, Show me the second book. What's the name of the second book? Okay, so the second book is The Popular Girl First Communion. Oh, oh, oh. I know. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, So my athletic director at my previous school is also a minister. And he came up to me one day in the gym and was like, hey, look, hood rat and a church mouse. Write a book. And I was like, okay. Mm. And I wrote it. And Mm. so it's a cute story about um, the popular girl now has, you know, she's accepted Christ. She's gone through her baptism. And so her first communion service has come. And the hood rat and the church mouse, there's a little spin story. But you got to buy it to to get the full story. I I can't give too much. You got got to actually buy it. When you said um, you wrote that first book in one day, how long did it take you to write the second book? One day. All right. so, So you just basically... Took off the stigma of, man, your summer's over. You about to be locked in a room one day. One day. Locked in. Locked in. One day. One day. All right, so 
no writer's block, no. Mm -mm. And that's why I say I, I'm very intentional about everybody's always like, when's the next book? When's the next Chris, book? How big like, the words on this book? Ah, uh, you know, they're. Let me see. Let me see these words. Oh, so yeah, no, no, hold it up. No, hold it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking one day it got no, to be the cat some, in yeah. the hat. No. <laughs> no, we got some, yeah, some yeah, yeah, depth you know some in stuff. here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this All was... right. So you you didn't get you wasn't hung up on, man, I gotta have 222 pages. Mm -mm. How'd you know the book was done, bruh? Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest too. I told you I'm not a big reader. Um, I know people probably don't read a lot, so I'm not looking to just, you know, I don't need a 200 page book to get the meat and potatoes. That's mm. how I feel. You don't have to get all a thousand words to get your point across. You can really just hit them with what you need. And I just wanted to make sure that the, the point, the purpose of the book was met and it was in 12 pages. Who are your books for? So who's your audience? Everyone asks that, and finally people are starting to realize there's no age limit, there's no gender. It's for everybody. It's God's word. God's word don't have no age yeah. bracket. It don't have yeah. age, th none of that. Yeah. So it's really for everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, it does have a childlike character, so of course it's more geared to the children. Mm -hmm. But this word, God's word, can help everybody. So yeah. I don't want to limit it to any age. Yeah. And then how do your peers receive you? Now she on her second. <laughs> I ain't about to, I'm on my second joint, right? Um, how, how, how did that change um, when you go from, well, it didn't take you but one day to write it, but when to go from, <laughs> girl, I can't come today because I got to write this book. But right. how do your peers look at you now as an author? Um, I think they're very proud of me. Um, they're very supportive. They've seen the grind. Um, you know, they they really believe in what I'm doing. So um, they call me best-selling author. You know, as a joke, but we we I just speak of that. I, we just talked on social media, and you said, "Excuse me, <laughs> I'm in back to back <laughs> meetings." I gotta ask you this. <laughs> That's a true story, y'all. That's what she told me. Excuse I me, I got back to back <laughs> meetings, Marcus. Um, yo, talk to me about the the revenue and publishing art. Like, how would I be in? Like, how do we make money? I, I I guess I understand music. You stream me, you buy my record, boom, boom, boom. Books, how does it work? Um, so, again, it's really a grind. Um, I'm going to events. I'm doing vendor tables. Um, I'm showing up at, you know, anywhere I can really to kind of get a mon to monetize off of the book. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's no specific way. It's really what you're willing to do. Um, I've hosted conferences where I'm able to sell the books. Just really getting myself out there is the biggest thing. I yeah. know with my first book, I was at like hip hop concert, like I'm nowhere near Jesus, but yeah. I'm like, I gotta sell these books. I have yeah. to make myself known. And that's really kind of how I've learned to push myself out there is being able to say, hey, it's me, I have a book, can I come? Or, you know, just, just making myself present and available. You would be the equivalent of the independent artist selling out the trunk. Yes, that's yeah. me. I'm that's trapping me. out the trunk. All right, so now uh, Barnes and Nobles, uh, what's give me some other big big stores? Um, uh, Books a million. Yeah. Um, Mardell's or something like that. I think yes. that's one. Yeah. All right. So if they get your book, right? Mm -hmm. God willing, they get your book and they sell ten thousand copies of the book. Mm -hmm. Who gets the money? And see, that's the tricky part. Now, they do get a percentage. I do get royalties over that. And I think that's also been a little bit of my hesitation of, like, feeling like it has to be in stores. Because, really, when I sell it, I get it. Yeah. And I don't have to split it. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's – I know the stores is a big thing when you're really selling. But I feel like for me, where I'm at and I'm still in the early stages, you know, it, it best benefits me to kind of do it myself. Yeah. Um, same thing with Amazon Books Online. Yes. Do yes. they do they make more off of it than you do? Yes, way too much. And my book, only one book, is on Amazon because I have my own website. Yeah. Author Carissa Hubbard at Square dot site. Did you just look at the camera and sell that <laughs> I girl? Did. I sure did. <laughs> right. um, well, being an independent, how do you know how much to sell your book for? Um, really, um, so with my publisher, they tell me how much it costs for my book to print and we kind of publishing costs. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so we kind of gauge it off that if it costs $12 to print the book, then I'm at least trying to make a profit off of that. So I also am very $12 to print. How much is the book? 17, 25, 35, 55. See, but, but my heart is like, I'm not trying to 
I'm I would love to make a million off my books, but I'm not gonna do that to people. So my books, my third book is fourteen ninety nine, and my other two books are twelve ninety nine. And as they've seasoned, like my first book now, I'm selling for seven. I'm marking it down a little yeah. bit because I mean that's just how business works. Yeah, like sure. I'm not out here to. You mentioned the third book. You did come in here with three books, yeah. man. Let's talk about it. I guess it's the popular girl in the bill. She back. It is the popular girl alphabet scripture book. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this one is really just this is my universal book. I felt like I wanted to kind of have something that wasn't too churchy for the people that felt mm -hmm. like it was too churchy it's just a scripture for every alphabet and so um even if you don't care too much for the scripture part is learn your abcs for your kids um it's very colorful it's bright it has a pop to it um so i just wanted that for you know even the people that say well it's a girl book well no now it's just alphabet so it yeah. don't have nothing to do with the popular girl it's just alphabet yeah. scriptures you would you say this generation reads a lot still or no be honest as a educator they can't read that's why your book 12 pages. <laughs> That's exactly why. Because I didn't want to make it hard for the babies. It don't have to be nothing too hard. All right. So as an adult, I got to say this. Um, I want to say it was last year. It might have been a year. Time go by so fast. I said I was going to read more, mm -hmm. right? And I had the intention of reading more. I have other authors that stopped through the show. Okay. And I hadn't touched their book yet, right? <laughs> but I, I said this. I found out about this thing called Audible. Mm-hmm. Audio books. Mm -hmm. That changed the game for me because now I don't care about traffic no more. I just sit there and listen, listen. to yeah, listen to a lot of people's story. Um, where are you at on that? You know, it's it's crossed my mind for sure. Um, I like I said, I'm just so like old. I love the paper to pen, but it's it's an avenue for it. It's it's really a lane. It is what people are doing. So you also have to stay with the time. So I'm gonna get there. Let me ask you this: how fa how how fast could you read through that book? Um, it would take me a little while just because, and I realized like, even though it's only a couple pages, it's a lot of words. So maybe seven minutes. And you said a little while. That's a little while. Uh huh. That's short. That seems a little long. We've though. been on interview 18. We'd have read Have all we? three. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Maybe. Maybe the reason not that I, okay, bad. So, so Chris, the reason why I said that is because just, I gave, I want to give you the same blessing I gave the other authors who hadn't touched Audible. Just like we're on this podcast right now, right? Mm -hmm. People know my heart, and my heart is to touch people. And I know we're doing this interview, and I definitely want to know about the popular girl, right? Yes. But for those people who don't want to read, I want them to hear the popular girl. Yeah. And I want them to hear it in your voice. Oh. So I would love for you to pray about you doing an audio book right out of the Blessed Beach studio of all three of your books. Y'all see that smile on I her face? I love that. <laughs> did I just do that to you? I love All right. that. Um, I love the cover. Who did the artwork on your books? Um, I actually have three different illustrators. Um, Fiverr.com. Paid for you are advice. the cut corner queen, huh? Man, I'm an educator. <laughs> I'm a broke educator out here. Does Fiverr really? Uh, they, obviously, they do great work. Absolutely great. I'm not going to lie to you. It's top tier. It. it I know you it seems a little shaky, yeah. but it, they get the job done 100%. Yeah. What do you want to see this popular girl going? What's next after the popular girl? So my biggest goal right now is to turn the popular girl into an animated series. Um, I feel like there is a wide open lane right now for children's Christian black girl representation animation series. Um, and so I that is that's the plan. That's the agenda. Um, I know right now I need a team too. Um, I've been doing everything myself, marketing everything by myself. Um, so really kind of figuring out a team to surround myself so that I can be successful and, and push that. We are on the World Wide Web. We are on these national airwaves. Look right there in that camera. Tell these people you need the team. If they want to get at you, how can I do that? You can follow me on author Carissa Hubbard at on Instagram. Um, Twitter is author K Hubbard. And then my Facebook is Carissa Hubbard. Absolutely. Love that when my author stopped through. But Carissa, you kind of just blessed me and gave me some game. You told me about Fiverr. Yes. I can write a book. It ain't got to be but 10 pages. Yes. I can get all of this done. And, uh, well, I got to ask this. What's, this will be my last question. What's the best way to get to this publisher? Because if I write one, then what? 
Um, you know, that's kind of up to you. Um, I knew that I wanted somebody who understood my vision. Um, and so Google, my other best friend, um, and I just kind of did my research on publishing companies around the world that, you know, support the Christian background, um, really are going to take care of me. Um, and I found a company out of South Carolina actually, and they've been holding me down since 2018. So just finding the right fit. I thank you so much for stopping through the show. Best-selling author. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> and former Hooper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for stopping through thank the show. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. More of your favorites along the way. Uh, make sure you go to blessedbeats.com to get this on replay. Go to YouTube, and you can always subscribe. Find my girl and support her. This is the Blessed Beats Live weekend podcast.